Welcome to Toffee TV. It is my three things from Everton to Watford 5. I call this one part. It's still berserk saying that. Um, yeah, Everton capitulated really the last, whatever it was, 15, 20 minutes. 2 1 up uh, against a team that hadn't really caused us any issues. And then once they equalised, caused us huge issues for the rest of the game and destroyed us in the end with that with their goals. Uh, it's it's a mad one. It's a mad game. Footy is mad. The only issue is it's getting boring. That we're never the team that does this to anybody. That's that's where it doesn't quite ring true. Uh, first thing I'll talk about is the defence, which I thought was embarrassing from the first minute to the end. I thought collectively they were horrific, every one of them. Godfrey, shocking, absolutely appalling today. Uh, Michael Keane, awful, absolutely awful. Uh, ironically, he had an assist. Uh, his, his best way came at the other end of the pitch with a great ball in for Richarlison for the goal, but defensively, he was all over the place. The two full-backs never got to grips with either side. Just really poor display. Um, the keeper... Can't blame them too much for the goals, but where's the organisation? You know, there's nothing. The the problem I have with this Everton side is, and I thought we kind of not corrected it, but I'd seen shoots of recovery. I'd seen us at Old Trafford backing each other up and stuff like that, which was really good to see. But nobody questions each other. It's it's all too easy. It's it's too no one's culpable, and that just rings through the team, which means that. They quite easily can concede two, three, four very quickly, which they've done today. Seen them do it at Villa, three in nine minutes. Well, it was four in 15 minutes today. So that, to me, isn't a team. You can give goals away that quickly without one of you not getting organised, not getting a grip of what's happening. Then it's ridiculous. And the goals were poor. Um, and I don't really know. Without Mina, that defence is all over the gaff. You know, people have blamed Holgate at times. I'm not saying he should be in. I'm just saying when he's played, people have blamed Keane and people have blamed Godfrey and people have blamed Mina. But the only one who's any good in that back four, who you know is a top defender, who will try to get his head on things and get blocks in and organise, is Yeri Mina. The others don't do it. Ben Godfrey, at the moment, looks a shell of himself. His heading's terrible. It's all over, 50 pence head. And he just seems to be all over the gaff. Now, I know he's been ill and I know he's just finding his way back in, but he's he's not playing well at all. Uh, Michael Keane alongside him, not playing well. Got bullied today by Josh King, who couldn't get a game for us. Uh, he's trained every day, or, well, whenever King made himself available for training, that was, which wasn't very often, but, you know, things like that. So, it's just not good enough, that defence, sadly. The set pieces which I'm going to include in the defence because they have to deal with it. They're all over the gaff. Your zonal marking, we haven't got a clue. Three goals in the last two games we've conceded from set pieces. Absolutely appalling. Um, and it's cost us dearly. And the manager has got to get together with that defence and sort it out. If it's not working for them, go back to man-to-man. -to -man. Just mark people in the box. Make it difficult. Um, but yeah, Really, really poor, really poor the defence today, and and you know you've scored two goals in a game, you've led twice, you def the defence has cost Everton dearly today. The midfield didn't help it out either. Allen was poor. Tom Davis, I thought, started really brightly, and, and I think he was all right. Davis today, but he's not what the core is for us, and we knew that anyway, didn't we? So others had to step in, but. Defence, I just can't look past the defence today. It was appalling. Absolutely shambolic display from them, every one of them. Uh, and it's ultimately cost us the cost us the game in the end. Uh, two, the second thing I want to talk about is the substitution from the manager who got it spectacularly wrong today. He's a, listen, he's done well, really up to a point. But taking off Anthony Gordon today when he was doing okay. Well, he was doing well. I, I, I can understand that he thinks, oh, well, you know, I, he's, he's not played many 90-minute games, but there was he was in the game still when they took him off. 
to take him off and leave Salomon Rondon on, who had been shocking all day, like really bad, really poor Rondon. Doesn't put, he's not putting himself about. He's not getting into the areas he should be. Doesn't look a threat at any time in the game. It wasn't like he was keeping the ball and, and giving us a starting point, a focal point, because he wasn't. I don't understand why he left them on. So that's on the manager. Uh, Anthony Gordon come off. Once he come off, we didn't have... You know, Richarlison came on, which was the right substitution, but, well, the right thing to do to bring Ritchie on the pitch, but it should have been at the expense of Rondon. Ritchie scores a goal in his first touch, really, which proves he, you know, he was a threat. He had another couple of opportunities that he forged out of nothing and shown us that what he can do. But that was a mad sub. And then to take off the Mari Gray and put Alex Abobi on is, was just berserk, in my opinion. Gray, again, stretching them. They were worried every time he got the ball. We were winning 2-1 and he took him off. And it ends 5-2. And I'm not saying it's down to Alex Iwobi, but what happened was we changed the way we were playing when he went off the pitch. So I have to look at the manager there and go, why is Gray the one to be coming off? You know, why not? If Gray's not fit, then Gordon goes out there. It just didn't make any sense. And then I have to look and think, God, Gabama must be awful. He must be awful or he must be injured because if he can't get 15 minutes in that team, even when it went 3-2, the manager could have, because they scored the fourth and the fifth, I think, you know, very late on, he could have gone, right, we need another man in midfield. Let's get something to get Bamman's way. Didn't even bring him on. And that, to me, is shocking, really. So I couldn't leave that out because I thought, it was, I thought it was a shocking decision mine today. Um you know, it's, it's, I don't know really what to say, what else more to say on it. Finally, the thing, uh, listen, I may as well go with it's good to have Richarlison back as my third, third thing, because it is. He's a goal threat, he scored again today. It was his first touch. Uh, it's, it's very important, but we were bemoaning the fact that we didn't have Dominic Calvert Luna and Richarlison in the side. But we would defend them well. We'd only conceded. I think most we conceded at Goodison so far this season a per game was one goal. And today, it's been embarrassing. Um, and so if you think of that defence being relatively tight and then you go and ship five goals against a team who are near the bottom of the league, doesn't bode well. Because you're thinking if we're relatively tight and we've got him at the top end of the pitch, he's a difference maker. So we keep doing what we're doing, creates a chance for him we're more likely to win games, <coughs> excuse me. And we didn't, we turned into Mike Walker's Everton or whatever, Martin versus Everton, where we're just wide open at the back. And that just wasn't good enough. But it's great to get the Charleston back and it's great to see him getting on the score sheet. I think the whole, I think everybody has got to have a look at themselves after today. You know, Seamus Coleman coming over at the end and trying to apologise and being told some home truths by the fans telling them where to go and get off the pitch. We don't need that. Coming over and going, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, when you've just been in a defence, which is the reason why we lost the game. You get your plays and you grab them off the pitch and you say, get off the pitch. Because, you know, I mean, most people had left anyway, but it's just not good enough. For us as fans, we just, we go, it, it, you go back every year and you've got a hope and you think, well, things might, you know, might get a bit of the rub of the green this season, or we might these players might click and we might have a go. But it's every year, it just feels we are writing the season off earlier and earlier every year. And in the hope that next summer will bring these new players and this will be the next era. And we just, it feels a little bit like, it feels pointless at the moment. Um, so we've got to get some structure, some stability, some mental toughness in this side that it can stay in games and then you can build from that right now we've had two home games in six days and I fancied us to win both of them we've lost both of them and we haven't just lost both of them we've been hammered today ridiculous scoreline so people have got to look in the mirror because it ain't good enough there you go they're my three things uh, yeah have a good weekend see you later